Okay, welcome to today's episode of Ask the Expert. I'm uh, very pleased today to be joined uh, by James Baker, who the Director of Performance in Gloucestershire. So uh, thanks for your time today, James. really appreciate it. No problem, Rob. appreciate the invite to come and have a chat. I'm not, I'm not quite sure about the expert status, but <laughs> uh, le- learn along the way still, definitely. Uh, so, no, I appreciate, t- appreciate the invite and having the opportunity to talk to you a bit about what we're doing with performance and, and our other bits and pieces. Fantastic. So for those who uh, maybe haven't come across you before, could you give us a bit of uh, information in terms of your background, your kind of previous coaching roles, education, how you came to be where you are today? Sure. Uh, so, so I started out on a sport and exercise science degree way back in 2003. I studied at the University of Gloucestershire. Um, I, I spent three years there um, came out of that not really having any kind of direction as to what I wanted to do. knew I wanted to work in sport. I was playing rugby at a, an OK level. I'd been through a, a Premiership Academy set up and um, then just ended up playing locally, um, more socially than anything else. Um, and then um, I took, it took me a little bit of time to kind of work out exactly what I wanted to do. And then actually it was a, a family member of mine had done the NSCA CSCS certification and I was like oh okay and I was, I was quite into you know I wouldn't say training I would say we were lifting weights and um in a in more of a probably bodybuilding fashion than any anything else at that time um uh, and, and we were just and I was kind of like no I'm into this I got into the training got into the you know studying a bit more about it a, a friend of mine um, really sort of introduced me to some higher level training, better training. Um, so I then started to look at the look at the qualifications that I could take, and I, and I came across the UKSCA um, probably around 2007, um, during which time I was just travelling and enjoying the the freedom of uh, the freedom of my youth, I guess. Um, and, I, and then I got back from travelling around two thousand, end of two thousand and eight, and um, I booked straight on to UKSCA foundation courses and completed that process through then till to sort of two thousand and ten. Um, but in two thousand and eight, I'd started to work with some junior tennis players um, at, actually at the school I'm based at now, St Peter's in Gloucester, uh, working with a guy called um, Ed Archer who's uh, one of the UKCA tutors and he and off the back of the work with the young tennis players and, and a local swimming club um, he formed the Athlete Academy and I went to work with him there and, um, I was probably working with Ed for about three years um, and at the Athlete Academy for about just under 18 months two years something like that um, and, and Ed really was a a huge influence on the way that well he was a huge influence in terms of opening my eyes to what could actually be done in training with young athletes I mean we were working with guys from as young as eight at that point um, most of them were sort of 11 and upwards up to about 18 and um, so spent a, so spent quite a lot of time I guess I was talking to someone about it the other day at the conference and I was like oh yeah but you know 2008 Crikey, that's you know eight years ago now that I've been kind of in this um, youth youth in various youth setups. So, um, but I then left the Athletic Academy in 2012 and, and set up on my own, and that was when performance began. Um, and in its it's kind of evolved in in what we offer as performance now. But at the time we were running um, rugby camps for junior rugby players, and I was working with I'd been I'd done an internship at Bristol Rugby, um, spent six months working there under some really good coaches, and uh, I worked there with Darren Hyde. Um, he's up with the Institute of Sport in Scotland now. Um, Tom McLaughlin was the the head there, head of S and C, and he's now down at Wasps. And then there was another guy, Andrew Petts, who was with the academy setup um, over, and I think he's now over with Bedford Blues. So some good guys to work with, learnt a lot from them while I was there on the internship and um, then um, the after that sort of period it was um, 
the opportunity came up as that was, was that 2009-2010 ended up with Ed. Um, but as I say, in the following that it was the pro performance stuff was um, was what we were focusing on. And actually, a guy that I met during the time um, was at Bristol, Jack Adams, who's one of the professional players. We ran a we ran pro performance initially as a he was handling the rugby specific side. And I was handling the um, S&C side specifically. So we'd bring kids in on camps and, and, and that was kind of what we did. And we had a, we had a few good camps. And then um, that, to be honest, led into, again, we were based from St. Peter's. So we were doing a lot of work in and around the school. And then the opportunity came to, to train as a, as a PE teacher, um, having completed the UKCA accreditation in 2010. Um, it was quite a unique opportunity to then get, be given an opportunity to go and apply what I'd been doing externally as a coach within within a school setting without too many limitations really at that point. Mm. So that's kind of where we're up to now and we've been building, building a programme at the school now for the last three years. Fantastic. So tell us a bit more about performance specifically. So when... Uh, so you said roughly sort of three years you've been running. What does it entail? What are the kind of ages, age range of athletes you're coaching, your kind of philosophy, etc.? Well, the, I mean, the, to be honest, the the performance side of it now is, it's it's not it's not just me. So it's myself and Mike Young, um, who is based in the US at Athletic Lab. Um, so so uh, the the coaching stuff is actually all done through school. So the the actual day-to-day coaching, um, I'm, I'm employed by St. Peter's as a PE teacher slash strength and conditioning coach. Um, and then performance is my um, extracurricular activity, I think we call it in school terms. So we we run, Mike and I run performance and it's kind of evolved from like coaching to, and that's why I said there's been several sort of incarnations of it it went from running camps to running one-to-one stuff and then it's evolved now more into this it, what we're building as a, an education network so events here in the UK and in the US and then obviously we've had a series of online webinars and you know, we're just we're both passionate about education um, we have kind of see that there's ways that we would like to offer education um and uh we're we're kind of just looking to you know give people opportunities now through what we're doing with performance to you know learn from other leaders within the field and share ideas and you know help people to to grow the network that they have and as i say just promote good practice and help people to develop and achieve what they want to achieve so that's that's kind of where performance is now um as I said, the, the bulk of my coaching is, is done directly through uh, through the school at, at St Peter's, and all part of my my commitments as a teacher S and C coach there. So, how did that relationship come about with Mike Young? How did that kind of get formed? Twitter, okay. <laughs> believe it or not, it was. Um, I'd been following Mike's stuff, as I'm sure uh, a lot of people. Um, listening to this will probably probably um, have done the same I'd seen a lot of the stuff that was on, on SlideShare some gr- you know some great slide decks I know he takes his time over producing those um, some you know seen some, some great sort of information coming out and I I just um, we'd been re- I'd just at the time set up the first couple of workshops that we ran as performance um, whilst I was operating on my own and uh, we'd run one with Nick Grantham and we'd had one booked in with Ian Jeffries and I just saw a um, a link to a video and, and Mike had been over uh, delivering in Dublin at the SSC Sandry and I just sent him a tweet from the link on Twitter and just said like, have you been to the UK? And he said, no. I said, do you want to come? He said, yeah, drop me his email and that was probably... November 
November 2014, something like that. And it took us probably four or five months then to, to nail down bringing him over to the UK. Um, and then he came and delivered a two-day workshop here at Hartbury College. Um, for um, We had some some top, top coaches come and get on board. And and, and during that time, we, we also filmed that workshop. And it was kind of off the back end of, of the workshop. And we were discussing how we were going to kind of operate the video and everything else. And we were saying, well, do we just stick this out and it becomes just the product that's there? Or do we we try and make something bigger of this. So we, we, we set about building building the network and then that was, here we are again, probably another six, seven months on and we've just run obviously the Child of Champion event and then we've got some stuff coming up in the US towards the end of May. So mm, it's one of those, um, yeah, social media, it's a powerful thing. Yes, often the little opportunities that sometimes explode into something bigger, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. If um, I'd have thought one tweet that would lead to where we are now. I, I, I well, just hadn't imagined that that was where we were going to end up. But we're in a good place. I think we both think we're on in a involved in something that's going in the right direction. So yeah, we're, it's all good. I've seen you uh, producing some really great content. I sat in on the uh, webinar with Brett Bartholomew, which was yeah. fantastic. So obviously some good links coming coming through there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just. Um, again, social media, we're reaching out and speaking to people, and you know, quite selfishly, sometimes we I reach out and speak to people that I want to hear from, and usually, if you know, they're someone that is of interest. You know, a lot of people seem to have a big interest in Brett and um, and the other guys that we've that we've had presenting stuff. It's yeah, it's, we've we've got some good links there now, some building some some good relationships with various coaches and yeah we we I think Brett's webinar was fantastic I think the interaction on that webinar in the in the quick q and I, I was struggling to keep up with what was going on I was just like trying to field questions and um almost ruined the webinar by uh muting Brett at one point but we <laughs> but we saved it so uh yeah it's, yeah it's good I'm glad you enjoyed it yeah, no, it's fantastic. I think that, you know, having a speaker of his quality, but also the way he, he was obviously very, very passionate about what he was talking about and oh, getting yeah, aged. And yeah. It was the kind of thing you could have gone on for hours and hours, I think. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. It, it probably could have. Um, so, yeah, we're, 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 we're talking to Brett about trying to make some other stuff happen. So, you know, that might be something that crops up. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So we've already mentioned a couple of times the Child of Champion Conference. So I wanted to dig into that a little yeah. bit more. So when when were your, your first thoughts of kind of thinking of having something a bit bigger? Uh, well, to be honest, again, it was one of those things that started. It started. I started thinking about a youth conference way over a year ago, back probably when I when I first started talking to Nick Grantham and Ian. We were ran Ian's in June last year um, but it's, and so that was the first kind of youth specific workshop he, he delivered the Building Future Games workshop which was fantastic and if you've ever got an opportunity to see Ian present and be around him and his enthusiasm I would, I would highly recommend it he's fantastic um, so and it was it's probably I say it might not have been quite a year so it's it probably straight off the back of that I started talking to Ian about the possibility of running something bigger on a youth on a youth focus um, and then after that I started speaking to Rodri so we and we were hoping to chat at the UKSCA conference which didn't didn't happen was people you know chatting away to various people and, and whatnot so we, we didn't manage to and so it's probably back then that we started thinking about it um, and then I spoke to Mike probably November, December time, and, and we were sort of, I was like, look, I, th I think I want to run a youth conference on this side of the pond, and he was like, mm, I'm not sure, is there a market for youth, you know, because we, we're kind of a, in, uh, we're still in very much startup mode as a business, and we're like, if we commit to this, are we going to sink ourselves before we even kind of begin to sail a ship, so... We thought about it a little bit more, and and that was when we started the comp the concept of 
the child to champion was is really based around providing the whole spectrum you know and mike made a really good point um saturday when we were introducing the conference and he said you know long long term athlete development doesn't stop when you get to 18 he said you know the development of an athlete now you you're looking at the whole lifespan sometimes these guys go on to 35 40 and you know we need to give consideration to the way that we train um you know athletes when they're in the later rate later stage of their life so are we going to use the same frequencies and intensities or are we going to have to just try and maintain and you know, look after them a little bit more and i thought that was i'd never really thought of it like that until he kind of put it down you know you think of guys like ryan Gates that have gone on to play at 40 and you think yeah that's that's another 20 years you know on on top of you know kind of the end of our contact at 18 it's it's a it's a long way, and I think we maybe need to think of it in a in a slightly different way like that. So we wanted to pull the conference together and and have um, have people that represented all the stages, right from you know the the early years primary up through to an elite level. And we were fortunate to pull some good people together and and make that happen. So you kind of mentioned the, uh, the names already, but I wanted you to uh, just kind of highlight. So who were the, the main speakers at the event and what were the kind of themes that came through? So, I mean, the, the main guys at the event we had, um, I'll start, if I start at the child end of the spectrum and progress up through, that might be the easiest way to do it and help my memory as well. Um, so we had Simon Brundish. Um, he runs a company called UK Strength Lab. Um, so he presented on... Uh, well, his his title for his his practical was move like a superhero. So he's got a superhero themed physical literacy program, which he operates, I think, in 20 primary schools up north. Fantastic. Um, so built around basic movements and, and progressions. He's got a 24 level system of superhero movements and... Um, that was that was a fantastic insight to what could be done. Um, he's developed some cool software as well with that that allows the schools to report and and sort of register progress in the way that schools must. Um, so that was uh, I kind of followed on in the next age gap, I guess, looking at uh, a, a deeper insight into what we've built with the elite performance pathway at St Peter's looking at the structures that are in place to carry our guys through from sort of 11 to 18. Um, we then had Rodri was looking presented on plyometric training and advances in that area at the moment um, looking at when it's most effective what we should be doing volumes intensities suggestions of how maybe we could rank and rate plyometric exercise um, and we had Ian Jeffries he uh, was looking at a task-based approach to, to movement what is effective movement how should we coach it um, and then we had from the academy level we we had uh, Shane Murphy from Manchester City talking about um, some of the research that they've done internally around peak height velocity and the and the onset of injury during the two years from the point of, of PHV onwards which was very interesting much higher percentage in those two years than than in any other um, in terms of all their injuries it was something like 63 percent of injuries occurred in that window not to two years after and they it gives an insight to how they kind of managed manage the kids training loads to try and reduce the reduce the risks I guess um, and then also we had Kev Paxton, um, who did a did a great job of looking at uh, age-related performance benchmarking that they use within the Leicester City Academy. Um, so looking at what they expect of kids at certain ages, and looking at how they um, uh, how they look at that then in relation to whether they're early or late maturers. Where are they? They in that sort of spectrum, and are they on track, or are they, you know, are they showing lower levels of performance? But they are actually a, um, 
um, you know, a, a late level, a, a late developer. Um, and in addition to that, we had Tom Rusger from the EIS who covered the complex developing athlete and uh, did a great job of actually helping me to understand a bit more about dynamical systems theory broke that down really nicely and explained it because the last time I listened to Franz Bosch with the UKCA about it I thought <laughs> that my head had exploded. Yeah, it's not the easiest theory to head around. No it isn't, no it isn't and uh, there's definitely smarter people out there than me um, that can get, get their heads around that and I would definitely say Tom is Tom is a super smart dude doing some really cool stuff so um, I'll definitely keep an eye on the stuff that he's doing. Um, and then the uh, at the elite end of the spectrum, we had Neil Potts, um, who talked us through the system that they've implemented with Scottish rugby, looking at the progression from the academy through to elite and looking specifically at the structure that they have, the progression that they expect with the coaches, what they expect from their players, the philosophy that they have within that system and got a real detailed insight to sort of positional benchmarking. Uh, what the elite benchmarks are for every position on the pitch um, and what then they would expect at certain age categories and, and how they would manage the progression from sort of under under 18s, under 20s up into the international setup. It was really interesting to see that they, in the past couple, past year or so, they, they've said that they've just got um, their first under 20s guys that have been called up into the full squad, which shows big progress in their system um, in terms of those guys making making that step up quite a young age. As you said before, previously they'd um, they'd, they'd never had someone at that age making the making the grade. It had always been later in the development. And then on top of that, we had. Mike over, obvious, obviously, um, wanted him to be there, not only because he's a quality presenter, but it was the first proper live event that we'd run as as a, a partnership with Proformance. It felt like it was important that he was there to be be a part of it, but also, obviously, the content that he brings is super high quality. So um, he presented on velocity-based training on the, on the Friday evening, and then we looked at um, strategies for developing speed across the developmental continuum and then on Sunday he in his terms he put the icing on the looked, looked at putting the icing on the cake and um, so beyond the fundamentals strategies and, and, and training methods forms of eccentric training that we could be using to elicit the, the final five to ten percent out of an athlete to see the supreme elite levels of performance. Fantastic. Sounds like it was pretty thorough from the start to finish. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was it was fantastic. I mean the we we couldn't really have wished for it to go any better than it did. And the the information that was brought by by each of the presenters, they did a they did a fantastic job in preparing for it and the attendees as well with the questions that they they came with it was just a it was a it was a really really great environment to be around for the weekend and met some super people and there was some super smart people in the audience as well that were keeping everyone on their toes so it was good I was following some of the tweets from there and I think you actually ended up trending on Twitter is that right yeah that, that was insane um, we we we'd said like okay we'll do some like if we can do some live tweeting the best tweet of the weekend will give a place to child to champion 2017 next year and um, I think Matt Dickens made it his sole mission to uh, get us trending but it was yeah that was um, that was way beyond anything that we've expected I kind of signed into Twitter and I looked at Mike and said we're trending and he was like what it's like yeah we're trending we're behind resigned David Cameron <laughs> <laughs> be fair, that's so, good over the last few weekends. Yeah, yeah. So we were we were obviously very pleased with that being a, a business that's trying to make some headway. Coverage like that is is probably invaluable to us at this stage. So you know, big thanks to Matt and everyone else that was, you know, 
took the time to, to share information from the conference because you know they were the ones who who achieved that so it's a as i say a massive thanks from us we're we're enormously grateful that, that people did that and you've kind of answered my next question which were uh, which was are there going to be plans for another one next year yes yeah yeah 100 uh, percent i say that quietly my wife's walking around somewhere she wasn't too, too happy when i kind of abandoned her for four days and did three months of work in the evenings to, uh, now, are you? <laughs> to make it happen yeah so I'm uh, we are making plans for it already certainly I think it was um, it, it, it was such a fantastic event and I think people really enjoyed the mix of theory and practical you know it's quite often that we see we go to conferences and this was part of our motivation for kind of setting the whole thing up was I don't mind sitting on my bum at a conference for a few days but you know, it's it's nice to get practical and see the way that people work and the way that they, you know, their, their exercise progressions or the way that they deliver speed and agility or whatever. It's great to get your hands on. I find there's a bit of a deeper learning experience. So we're, we're keen to push on and, and get another one. We've now just got to live up to expectations, I guess. Before, there probably wasn't too many. We just, and now we've got one to... A great start that we've now got a backup and uh, match in 2017. But I'm up for the challenge. I think we've got some great practitioners around the UK and, and across Europe that uh, a lot of people have expressed an interest in getting involved. So I'm hopeful we can uh, pull some some big fish in, shall we say, and, and and get another great conference together. Fantastic. So for those like myself who unfortunately couldn't make it the weekend, are there going to be any resources available? If so, what will they be? Where will people be able to get a hold of that? Yeah, I mean, we we, we, we filmed a, quite a chunk of the conference. Um, we haven't really decided how that's going to be released as yet. Um, presenters very kindly allowed us to do it. Um, there's They had slides and things which we're sort of chatting to them about at the moment as to whether we can kind of get um, get their agreement to, to, to kind of share those a bit. Um, so the idea the idea will be that hopefully, I think the videos are going to take a little while to edit, um, probably from what the guys told me, probably about six to eight weeks, so a couple of months before we, we even see the fully edited versions and then um, I'd imagine they'll probably appear through the performance site in some way, shape or, or form um, as and when they become available. So kind of moving on from that, I wanted to pick your brain a bit about your kind of day-to-day -day coaching practice. So you mentioned your, yeah. your kind of dual role as a teacher and SSC coach. So yeah. in terms of uh, the ages that you're coaching, what's your kind of philosophy in terms of uh, the young ones through to the, the older groups? Um, I, th I think the key, we talked a little bit about this on the, during the presentation on the weekend, and I think the main, one of the main things we've tried to do this year, um, more so than we have in previous years, is, and I've got to probably thank the PE teachers around me for forcing me to, to, to kind of change my structured strength and conditioning ways, but at the bottom, I say the bottom end, it isn't the bottom end, they're very good young athletes. Um, at the youngest end of our spectrum, the, the 11s, uh, year, the 11 year olds and 12 year olds, the, the philosophy has been based around really um, engaging them, you know, and, and, and making the sessions engaging and high paced. And I don't, I don't like the word fun because I think sometimes people misinterpret what kids it's fine as fun and it's not just messing around and playing around it's that balance between skill and challenge I think that that they that they enjoy so we've looked to put a structure together that that engages them um, a range of activities less structured than a than a you know a, a, our older groups our older groups are very much in a when they get up through year nine ten they're in a ready then for a more general strength training program so at that point we're the the next big part of our philosophy is is consistency really in in terms of 
we're we are very very fortunate in the in the backing that we've had from from St Peter's High School um, and and the the leadership team there with with what we've created and and they've been very good to give us time within the curriculum in the timetable that allows us to achieve a very high level of consistent training so we see the athletes every week we see them in their timetable in the day between the hours of nine and three um, so we're reducing the sort of extracurricular load for the athletes and the parents we're helping them to better manage their bodies um, and we're t just very consistent in the training so they my philosophy is based around run fast every week they jump and be explosive every week and they and we focus on getting stronger um, and then we kind of just rotate the emphasis around different factors across the, the school year using the half term structure as our mesocycles if you like um, and so we try and get a rounded development in um, but you know we very much train all things all the time that's that's the way that I like to to do it keep the, the in the words of Nick Grantham to keep the plate spinning he looks at components of fitness as 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 spinning plates and I'm in agreement with him that if you leave one alone too long particularly if you're looking at speed and power based stuff where the rate of decay is slightly faster um, I think you know we need to be doing those things and, and doing them regularly and giving athletes the opportunity to move quickly and explosively not just under under loads lifting weight so that's kind of my quick summary of my, my take on it I guess. So uh, in terms of the, the kind of day-to-day -day things that you're doing, are you doing any maturation or monitoring or got plans for any maturation or monitoring? What's the... Yeah, we, we do do, we do, we've been doing sort of maturity offset, so height, sitting height, and then using a formula to calculate uh, where they are in relation to PHV, and then you get, you know, you get that figure, mm -hmm. minus one, minus two, minus 0.5, or whatever, and we've been, we have been looking at that, but to be honest, that's a, that's a, I actually had a conversation with our head of PE today, and that's something that we is is an area that we're looking to develop and, and do better. And I've been talking to numerous people, um, but been kind enough to weather my questions and other things to look at developing that part of our system a little bit more to get, particularly in our younger age groups, to get a picture of where they are and, and when they're hitting hitting that peak height velocity. And we've got some some younger guys that. You know, we can see our in peak height velocity now, and it's. But I think it's something that we can do a lot better. And I'm, I'm not sure from talking to to people that the um, maturity offset is now the best way. There, there are other means and methods. The Karmis Roach method that we're looking at, particularly at the moment, which is from predicted adult height and expressed as a percentage of that. So we're we're looking into those at the moment and. Hopefully we'll settle on some decisions on what is what is reasonable um, for us to do with the time that we have as well. So the big challenge for me at the moment with the data and monitoring side of things is um, is the time around my other teaching commitments. I manage um, exam PE groups as well, so the the administration side of that, the planning, the marking, and all those kind of things it, it creates. A limited amount of time to to kind of do everything that we that we want to do. So the the monitoring and the monitoring side of things and, and growth and maturation, as I say, is the air, a big area of focus now as we as we plan for next year. Start sketching some ideas out today for that. So nice, it's good. I think that's um, one of the kind of more practical ways that I've used in the in the past. That kind of Merwold equation and being over there, maturity offset. It's a nice kind of, I guess it's a, it's a good balance between something you can do quite easily without a lot of kit, but something that's giving mm. you a relative level of accuracy. I mean, not, not as yeah. as obviously getting an X-ray of, of uh, people's wrists, etc. But in the practicalities of day to day, that's not always useful. No, I, not with 120 kids on the program. No, I don't. That yeah. wouldn't be wouldn't be reasonable. Uh, coming out your coming out your ears. No, and it, it, you know, it's in certain 
certainly in some of our P lessons with our younger groups, we, you know, by the time they've got changed, we probably get 40 minutes. You know, and you've got to ask yourself is, you know, how much time do you spend testing and how much time do you spend training? And that's why we're kind of trying to periodically do it. Again, we use the term structure. So at the end of each term, we do the assessments. That gives us roughly quarterly um, that we get the assessment points. Um, and you know, getting kids to do height, sitting height and things like that when you've got 30 of them queuing up. Oh yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a lot of fun. I haven't got a lot of hair left to pull out, so um, <laughs> I don't really want to. Um, no, it's um, it's important that we do that stuff. And and what we you know recognise at the moment is that we're we're probably not doing it well enough um, to to make the best decisions. And you know we're doing it, but as I say, we want you know. We're striving for the program to, to keep developing and be as at the highest level we possibly can. So we're, you know, targeting these areas to to keep getting better. So in terms of kind of your coaching career, what would you consider to be your biggest success to date? Um, I would say it's easily the, the the creation of the EPP and managing to get that integrated into St Peter's, which is a which is a state school, you know, it's a school of uh, 1,700 pupils. Um, you know, we're we're a comprehensive, comprehensive school. We're not, you know, funded by enormous admission fees or the benefactors of a rich parent or parents that, that can kind of throw money at stuff. So. You know, we've been very resourceful in the way that we've pulled together and, and created something on a on a restricted budget. We've we've done some hard labour ourselves. We recently upgraded the gym, opened the spacer. Um, we couldn't get the funding we needed for someone to come and install the floor professionally. So uh, myself and the head of PE, Stuart Crabb, we spent a week and a half on our hands and knees laying gym floor and laying astro tiles and various other things to, to kind of give the kids a, um, you know, a, a great facility to train and something that will continue to develop over the years as, as, as many becomes available. But um, yeah, that, that, that certainly feels like my biggest success as a coach at the moment is to, you know, have had that system develop, which has grown from when I arrived in 2013, it was five kids in two hours on a on a Wednesday afternoon, and there wasn't an EPP. It was just time and people and some equipment. And from there, now we're up to 120 athletes and 20 hours contact time within the curriculum. So, okay. you know, that feels like good progress. So, on the flip side of that, what do you think is the uh, maybe you're not your finest hour or your, your biggest failure in coaching? Oh, there's plenty, <laughs> I would say. I'm, I'm the first to, I think it's important that we, we talk about things that went wrong. And I actually wrote an article about it recently and it was looking at the reasons why, you know, our, our athlete, our, our early LTAD programs didn't succeed, you know, oh, yeah. and they didn't make it long term, you know. And I think my... My, the biggest thing was, you know, forgetting that they are kids, you know, and that as detailed and interesting as we find the nuances of the overhead squat or the back squat, a 11 or 12 year old kid doesn't share our enthusiasm for standing and nitpicking technique. And, you know, the early days, that was what we were, what we were doing, you know.